Thank you, Dr. Herbert. And I'd like to thank the witnesses for your substantive and sober testimony and for coming in at five minutes. We really appreciate that. And I'd say to the senators, we're now going to turn to a round of five-minute questions uh, for each of us. And um, I'm going to start, uh, Mr. Mueller, with you and ask you, assuming we move forward as we are now with no changes to our water use and no meaningful action to slow climate change, can you describe what you think the Colorado River Basin will look like in 20 years or 40 years? Could you give the committee also a little bit of a sense about what is happening in Lake Powell and Lake Mead as well? Absolutely. Thank you, Senator. Um, I would say uh, 20 or 30 years from now, uh, the Colorado River Basin will be a starkly different place if we don't act quickly and, and, and act intelligently. Um, all of the, the scientific consensus is clear that we will uh, are facing a, a situation where we can expect as um, uh, additional cuts to the uh, flow of the Colorado River as great as 30 percent, so a 50 percent reduction from 20 years ago. Um, this is in a river system that, again, is already over-appropriated and overused. What that means is that we, uh, we will have great conflict between our growing cities in the river basin and our national food supply. It, it means that uh, the, the price and value of water will exceed the current value of agricultural production water. And it is likely that our agriculture in the Colorado River Basin will be greatly diminished. Um, it is a situation that is dire, frankly. Um, you know, I talk about our family farms and, and ranches in, in western Colorado. But the reality is uh, our farmers throughout the Colorado River Basin feed America. Um, you, you look to the, southern, the, the lower basin, and any of us who have enjoyed a salad in the winter, it's coming from Yuma, Arizona, or in the Imperial Irrigation District. Um, it's watered with Colorado River water. We simply cannot... Uh, see that disappear uh, over the next 30 years. Uh, today, uh, the, the, um, the, that massive system of reservoirs that I referred to has the two largest. That's the uh, Lake Mead at uh, Hoover Dam and uh, Lake Powell with the Glen Canyon Dam. Uh, you may have read in the paper that the states and the, and the Department of Interior uh, very cooperatively this year enacted some extremely shocking emergency actions and, and did so in the space of about two weeks of dialogue. We're talking about a water bureaucracy that moves at the pace of uh, melting glaciers uh, 200 years ago, not, not in today's pace. And, and they came together because what the, the reality is uh, that Lake Powell was uh, uh, predicted to drop below uh, minimum power production at the lake. And that's bad enough because the Western uh, United States depends upon that uh, cheap power coming out of the uh, crisp reservoirs. Uh, but it's even worse when you look at the infrastructure issue associated with that. That leaves us with two outlets out of Glen Canyon Dam. Um, the concern at the Bureau of Reclamation was that those uh, two river bypass outlets would actually cavitate like they did in the 1980s and erode the concrete tunnels that, that pass that water because they uh, appear not to be uh, uh, functioning as they were designed in the, in the early 1960s. Um, it, the concern was that we would not be able to pass water to the lower basin at all. Not, no water in the Grand Canyon, no water for California, no water for Nevada. And, and that, that is a, a stark uh, 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 warning to all of us. Um, th we were within months of hitting that level at, in, in Lake Powell. So we moved water around, um, didn't release as much out of uh, Glen Canyon down through the Grand Canyon this year, about half a million acre feet. And we also moved another half million acre feet from Flaming Gorge Reservoir up in Wyoming and Utah down into Lake Powell. These are one-time fixes. These are one moment in time. We don't have any more uh, of those uh, IV bags, as I call them, our upper basin reservoirs. Um, our, you know, the, the three reservoirs that sit, that the federal government control that sit above Lake Powell are, sit at uh, approximately 23 27 and uh, somewhere around 50% full, respectively. They are uh, uh, stark and, and empty. Um, this year's snowpack, as, as we sit here today, is, has melted a full month earlier than the average runoff. Uh, our runoff peaked at about 60% of average runoff. 
Um, as I referenced in my written testimony last year, we had about an 89% snowpack in the Colorado River Basin. Pretty good, close to, close to average. Well, the inflow into Lake Powell, where it, where it really matters, uh, was less than 37%. So the, 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 the change and the heat is, is just killing this river. And so um, I, I would just say that, that um, we need to act. We need to act uh, in a way that supports our, our agricultural community. Um, and I think that uh, the federal government and uh, through the Department of Agriculture has a tremendous ability to do that with our producers hand in hand. Thank you. Mr. Mueller, I'm going to reserve my other questions until my colleagues have a chance to ask theirs. So 